What's up everyone, this is Tyson at Titans of CNC. This used to be a part back in the day when we did it, where I would do all the lathe work first, and then after it was entirely turned, both sides, we'd hand it over to the mill department for them to finish the fins. But today I'm gonna to be doing the entire thing on the SMX 3100. Now for those of you that don't know, a blisk is actually a bladed disc. It's a very important part that you see in aerospace engines. And before, this kind of part used to be separate pieces. You'd have the disc, the centerpiece, and then you'd have a bunch of separate blades that would screw into that disc. Well, a blisk combines those two, and it's a single solid piece with multiple blades all sticking out. People figured out that it would be more efficient to make, and it would perform better, if instead of having multiple pieces on the blades and the disc, if you just combine them into one solid piece. And it's a very common part that you see in this industry, and it's something we used to make all the time. So I've got Mastercam opened over here, and I've got our Aerospace Academy print for the Blisk open. This is the Titan 825. And I'm gonna walk you through my program, and I'll show you each tool, what I did, and any tips and tricks that I found that I needed to do on this part. So for this part, we're gonna be doing it in two operations. The first operation, we're gonna face one side, turn just a little bit of the OD, just what I can't reach on the second op, but we're gonna be mostly focusing on the ID of the part. I'm gonna turn the entire ID, rough it out, there's a lot of material coming off of there, and we'll get a nice finished surface on the inside of the part all the way through. And then for the next op, we're actually gonna be holding it in the ID. So I'm gonna be making a set of pie jaws that fit the ID of this part perfectly, and go down as far deep as I can get them to go. And we're gonna be holding it from the inside of the part, and we're gonna rough away and finish all of the outside along with milling the part. So for our first tool, I'm gonna to be using a CNMG 432. This is gonna go in the upper spindle in a KM50 holder. And the inserts I'm gonna be using are KCP40B inserts. These are good inserts for roughing stainless steel. And we're gonna start off by facing the part just enough to where I get a nice clean face all the way down. I'm gonna be running this tool at 350 SFM with a feed rate of 11 thousandths per revolution. For the face, I'm just gonna do a nice face cut to where it cleans up nicely. But then for the OD, I'm gonna be taking 100,000 steps of cuts. Now I mentioned I'm only turning a little bit of the OD on this part. So I'm only gonna be turning the very front of the part up into the blade wall. So just this little section right here. So just the other side of the part that I can't reach on op two, that's what I'm gonna be turning on this op for the OD. So one thing with the face pass was I don't actually face down the entirety of the part. I was worried about the top of the holder and the top of the spindle hitting either the jaws or the top of the part. And I didn't want to reorientate it in another way. I didn't want to have the tool sticking out really far while I was facing it. So I only go down just a little bit, just enough to where it would clean up, knowing that when I do my ID later on, that all that material that I'm missing right there is gonna be going away. So just as long as I make sure my drill starts back far enough, we well, should be okay. And the way I did that was I put a negative 2.5 inches in the overcut amount in the face pass. So that should make it stay off five inches in diameter when it does the face pass. So that's where it's gonna stop and then it'll continue on to the OD roughing. So after we have our OD fully roughed, then I bring up the drill. I'm gonna be using a two inch diameter drill and it's actually Kenna Metal's brand new Drill Fix Pro inserted drill and it's gonna be in a horizontal KM50 holder. So for this drill, I'm gonna be running it at 1,128 RPM. And that's actually really fast for a two inch drill. That puts us at 590 SFM with a feed rate of 3 thousandths. I've got the drill going well past the end of the part because I wanna make sure that the part's entirely through. 
And just because I know that the drill can handle it and it's designed that you can cut a little bit off center, I put a little 12 thousandths offset in X just to make sure the drill cuts a little bit oversized because I'm roughing out material, just to help a little bit out with the roughing. Oh man, we're about to take some crazy cuts, but before we do, I just wanna say real quick, these inserts are $6 a piece, that's right. Canamato is basically giving them away because they wanna get them into your hands because once you use them, you're gonna know these are the best inserts on the planet. They're gonna increase your productivity, your efficiency, and all of it. $6 a piece on our store. And if you haven't gone on our store, make sure you check out the prices, look at the different inserts. On average, we're about 40% less expensive than all other distributors, so check it out. Boom. So after the drill, the next tool that comes up is a boring bar to rough out the entirety of the ID. We're using the same kind of insert as the first operation, the KCP40B insert. So for that, we're gonna be running it at the same speeds and feeds as the OD roughing operation. So 350 SFM, feed rate of 11 thousandths per revolution. The only difference is for the depth of cut, I'm just backing it off a hair to 90 thousandths. One thing I want to make sure for this roughing operation, and this really goes for anything you have a three bore like this, I just made sure that I'm cutting well past the back side of the part. Right now I have some material still hanging off that's going to be faced off the second op, so I want to make sure that I turn well past where the end of the part is, so on op 2, all of that material is freed up, and I don't find that I'm a little bit too short. So for my lead in and lead out options here, I added an extension of 200 thousandths past the end of the part. The next tool, we're back up on the upper spindle, and now we're going to be doing our finishing operations. We have a face pass, an OD pass, and an ID pass, all being done with the same tool. I'm gonna to be using a CCMT431MP insert with the KCS10B grade. And for all three of these operations, the face, the OD, and the ID, we're gonna be running it at 700 SFM with a feed rate of two and a half thousandths per revolution. Now the face and the OD pass, this is gonna be so the tool's angled straight down. So my tool angle settings, and I did this also on the very first tool. I have it set to a 90 degree angle, so it's going straight down. And I have the tool orientation flipped 180 degrees so the tool spins around in the holder. That's gonna be your standard facing and OD pass. Same chain as the first, very first tool. Then for the finish pass, I'm gonna take that same tool but the only difference is in the tool angle, I've got a zero degree angle, so it's gonna be horizontal, but I still have that 180 degree rotation, so I'm gonna be using it like a boring bar. I've done this kind of tool path before in other videos. One thing that's very important for this kind of tool, if you're gonna use the same thing for the OD and the ID, is I wanna force this tool change over here by clicking this button. And that's gonna make the tool, after it's done with the OD pass, it's gonna go home so that it can do its rotation and do that out of the way of the machine and then bring it down like a fresh tool. You don't want it to be rotating right after it's done with the OD pass. You want it to get out of the way, do the rotation, then come back and finish it. And then same deal as the roughing pass. I just wanna make sure that when I finish it, I'm well past the end of the part. So after this operation, we're ready for the second op and that's when I'm gonna take the part out, unclamp it, put it into my second set of jaws and clamp on the other side. I'm doing that manually, but I did put the sequence here just so that I had it in my program and so it automatically sent everything that I did from op one. It already prepared it for op two on the other side. So it already has everything that's been machined already. It moved my part and everything there. So for the second op, we're gonna be holding it in pie jaws that I machined to the ID of this part. And I actually, in these jaws, I put an extra step in them to give myself a relief for when I do the milling operations that my tool has a little bit of clearance to go around the backside of the blades. We're gonna be clamping on the inside of the part and as deep as these jaws can go, including the little step that I machined. So I want the part all the way in there 
and the chuck pressure on the second side is a lot lower than when on the first side where I had it all the way up. Now one thing I found out that I had to do with this setup is I actually had to kick the A axis out a little bit. And that's because all the way back at the home position for the A axis, I found out when I was dry running the milling operations, I'm actually gonna run into some travel issues with the milling head. When the milling head starts to get too close to the chuck, it actually runs out of room for the milling head to travel. So to get around that, I actually moved the A axis out an inch and a half and I actually put that on my work offset on G54. I'm actually not using the lower turret on the second side. Now the A-axis, which is the movement of the second spindle, moving it forward or back, is actually controlled by the second spindle on the lower stream. I'm not using any tools on the lower stream at all for the second operation. So what I have is a program that runs right before the second operation on the lower turret, which is an M194, and then I say G0, A0. What that does is it moves my A axis to A0, which is an inch and a half out from the home position. With that, my entire second side is going to run from that offset. I'm not gonna have any clearance issues when I run my milling tools. We're gonna start with the first tool on op two, and that's gonna be a facing pass and an OD pass. It's gonna be the same tool as Op1. I've got my CNMG 432. I'm using the same KCP40B insert. We have a lot of material on the face of the part, so I'm gonna be facing that off with this tool. For the step overs on the face, we're gonna be going 50 thousandths. I double checked my clearances before I started the second operation, and I made sure that this tool wasn't gonna hit like I was worried about on Op1. It comes very close, but it doesn't hit. And I made sure to put my exact stock size in Mastercam so that Mastercam knew where the drill was and what material was being left on the front. So you see on the facing pass, I have my little two inch hole that I blasted through on the front of the part here. My face pass it starts going down to that two inch hole for the first few. And then once it clears it, then it just focuses on the top there. After that, we have our OD pass again, very similar to the first tool. I've got this front portion again that we're roughing, but this time we're actually roughing all the way up on the top of the blade. I did lighten up the rough passes, so this time it's 70 thousandths instead of 100 thousandths. My, I don't have as much clamping pressure as I did on op one, so just lightened it up just a hair. For both of these operations, I'm doing 300 SFM with a feed rate of 8 thousandths per revolution. So after I'm done roughing out the OD and taking off all that material on the face, I'm actually gonna reclamp the part. So I'm gonna quickly clamp and unclamp the part. And that's just to resettle things now that all that material has come off the part. And then I'm gonna re-indicate my part and make sure everything's sitting in perfectly before I start the real meat of this operation which is gonna be our milling operations. For the first milling operation, I did a 3D Opti Rough Pass to remove as much material as I could from this part. I'm using a 3 8 Harvey 3 end mill with a 60 thou radius, and I'm going 225 SFM with a feed rate of 1,003 tenths. It's a six flute end mill, so that puts it at about 18 inches per minute. So for the blades, it was a little tricky containing the tool pass just in the section that I wanted to. I wanted it to just rough out in between one blade, and then I was gonna copy that tool path and then translate it 24 times around the part. So what I did, I played around with the avoidance geometry and basically used it to contain the tool path in the section that I wanted it to. So I told it to avoid the blades around my tool path, but then I played around with some of the other surfaces here. So I've got two other colors here, black and blue. I played around with the tolerances a little bit to contain it a little more further. So for the black ones, I have a 600 thousandths wall offset. And that's because I saw the tool path kind of going into this middle section here and here. Just kind of forced it to avoid that. 
And then for the last little bit, I added one more, and that one just has a 100 thousandths, just to stay off of these radiuses. I was happy with the way that turned out, and then I have a wireframe right above that geometry where I made a boundary chain to contain that toolpath. There's a little bit of playing around to figure out how to contain that toolpath, but got it figured out there. For the setup, making sure that we're working with the upper right, and I'm doing a plane rotation for that. And I made sure to check maintain spindle origin and align with machine. I also made sure to create a stock model from my lathe operations. And I'm using that in the OptiRough Pass. So selected previous operations for the stock model and selected the stock model that I'm using right now. For the cut parameters, I'm doing a 25% step over. And because of the way I'm holding it and because I had to lighten up on the chuck pressure for the second side, I can't go full depth on this operation. So I did a step down of 50%, which is only 187 thousandths. This separates this pass into four depth. And that's just to stay safe on this pass. I only have one blisk. I don't want anything to go wrong on it. So after I was happy with that tool path, I did a transform pass, did a plane rotation, selected our operation, and then I told it, take that operation, copy it 24 times around the part, and then divided 360 by 25 times, since there's 25 blades. That puts it at a 14.4 degree angle. Programmed it one time, and then there's all the copied operations. And then I start my blade expert pass. Now for this blade expert pass, this is to finish the floor of these blades. And I actually did this twice. The first blade expert pass that I have is just to get rid of the last little bit of rough stock that was left from the 3D Opti Rough because it wasn't a true five axis tool path. So the tool I'm using is the same one that I'm gonna be using to finish the floor of the blades and that's a quarter inch Harvey One ball nose end mill. For this semi rough pass that I'm doing, I'm gonna be using 196 SFM. I put that at 3000 RPM and that's what that came out to. And then for the feed rate, I'm doing 1003 tenths again per tooth. So that puts this one at 15 inches per minute. I made sure that it's using the stock model that I just created after that roughing operation. And I told it I wanna do hub finishing. And I'm gonna use a much bigger step over than I'm using for the finishing pass. This one's a 15,000 step over. I can't go too crazy because it is a quarter inch tool and I do want to remove as much material as I can here. 15,000 step over and with the stock that I selected, it should only remove the sections that are sticking up that were left from the previous operation. For my part definition, I selected all the blades. It says 350, that sounds like a lot, but I used a shortcut when I was selecting it to double click on the blades and select all of the similar blades. For the hub, we selected our floor surface and then I put a 10 thousandths offset to stay off of it because this is just removing any excess material. So after that, I make one more stock model with the updated floor and then I actually copied that blade expert pass that I just made. I made a copy of it and I made an edit to make a finish pass. So for the finish pass, I kept the same feed rate, but I kicked up the SFM to 300 SFM. And that's because I'm doing a much lighter step over and I know the tool can handle it. Everything's exactly the same from when I made my first blade expert path, but this time I have a 5,000 step over with keeping everything nice and tight. And for the stock to leave, I took that out. So it's going right to zero. So after that operation, the next thing that I want to do is a swarf pass and that's to finish all of the sides of the blades. I've already taken care of the floor, now we have to do the sides. Now for the blade finishing, I ended up using a tapered end mill with a quarter inch diameter ball nose and a 625 body. Ended up doing 200 SFM with a feed rate of 1,000 to 3 tenths per tooth. It was a Harvey 3 tapered end mill, so there were six flutes on that end mill. With that, it puts us at 24 inches per minute for the tool. And that swarf pass just follows the blade wall and then goes to the next blade and does the back side. With those two swarf passes, I then do a translate tool path, just like I did before. And then I take those two swarf passes, transform them, select plane rotation, rotary rotate 24 times, 14.4 for the angle, copy it 
all around the park. So after our blades are finished, now we're gonna finally finish the OD of our parts. It's the same tool, the CTMT tool that I used, 700 SFM, two thousandths and five tenths for the finish, same as op one. The only difference on the tool orientation, I set that to zero degrees. And then same deal, we face it, we do the finish pass, and I do do an ID pass, but that ID pass is only hitting the chamfer of the part. But same deal as the first off, you have to make sure that you force the tool change on the part. And at the very end, I probably could have put it right before the uh, finishing of all the OD and everything, but it kind of slipped my mind actually. Um, I added a deeper pass. So for the very last tool, I did a 2D contour. And this one was very simple. For the chain, I just selected the top of one of the blades. I looked at all the planes that I already had and I picked one of the blades that was facing up in Z that I like, and I just selected the very top of that blade as my chain. And then for the cut parameters, I told it to do a 3D chamfer, and then just put a small chamfer on it, 10 thousandths all the way around. The tool that I used was the same ball mill that I used to finish the floor of the part. So I did the quarter inch Harvey One ball mill, and I used 3,000 RPM, and I used a feed rate of 1 thousandths and 3 tenths per tooth. And then, same deal as before, program one blade, and I did a transform toolpath, rotated it 24 times around the part just to make sure that it hits all 25 blades. And with that, we have our bliss complete. I just wanna double check a few dimensions to make sure that everything is perfect before I pull this thing out of the machine. But it looks really good, and hey, I'm ready to send this thing to space. So that was about machining the Blisk, a part that we used to make all the time that I used to love making them. And if you like this video, if you want to see more part tutorials or just cool stuff being made, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and let me know in the comments what other kinds of cool stuff you want to see us make or if you have any questions. And if you like what we're doing, especially with CNC Expert, providing that for free and you know all our online academies, the easiest way to support us is by being a member of our YouTube community. So if you hit the join button, we have different levels of how you can support us and gain access to our Discord channel to talk to all of us directly. And you can get exclusive behind the scenes content of what we do here or of just Donnie goofing off once in a while. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.